here now. Here we are. Here we Introducing are. Uh, to new viewers uh, to Steve Struggle here, a veteran of the uh, Black Nations National Liberation Movement. Thank you. And uh, myself, uh, Jewish Bundist, Jewish surviving Bundist from the original Bundist movement. Yeah. So what we have to offer here is uh, not journalism. We're not empiricists, you know, who come here to present to you facts that you may not have heard about in the mainstream media. That's being done very um, adequately, you know, by many other agencies. What we have to offer here is an analysis of those facts and what they mean, you know, in the long term. And so we're waiting. We're waiting to see the result of the fact that the Zionist state had attacked the uh, Iranian consulate in Damascus. And we're still waiting for a response from Iran. I mean, there was a, a Jewish uh, a Jewish guy who owns, you know, a Jewish billionaire uh, Zionist who owns this uh, uh, cargo ship that was uh, confiscated by Iran recently. That's about it, you know, so far. I expect something more. Well, Abraham, uh, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna step back a little bit and make this little analysis. It's the imperialists that are telling us we have to expect an attack very soon. Iran said they'll attack at the at the time of their choosing, and I'm just gonna leave it at that because there's so much slander being put out against Iran now by the imperialists. Well, Iran's Heightening tensions in the Middle East, the United States, um, Britain, as I understand, United States, France, and Britain did not vote on the Security Council to condemn the bombing of the embassy, which occurred in another country. So like the, the, the Israelis violated airspace, bombed the country, and killed people. Three things they did. And mm -hmm. that would have happened, well, let's look at an example. Wait, it happened in Mexico. Not exactly. But something very similar happened in Mexico. The Ecuadorians uh, attacked an embassy, arrested someone. I've heard very little condemnation from the OAS. Maybe the OAS has said something, I don't know, but the U.S. So it seemed, though, seemed as though when it comes to the high to high, high piracy and barbarism, the United States and Israel are taking the lead. So I, I'm just going to wait for Iran to do what it has to do. I have full faith they will do what they have to do, and it'll be all right. Trust me, I, I I think they're. I think we should leave it up to them to decide how and when they take care of it because, you mm -hmm. know, they're the ones who know there may be some, so there, there may be a, a retaliatory attack on, on like their country, uh, once this once this attack occurs, if it if it occurs, so I think that we I'm I'm just going to wait for them and trust that they have the understanding and knowledge of of you know what to do. Mm. I don't have that knowledge. You know, I don't have an army at my disposal. I don't have weapons. I don't have drones, you know, nothing like that. So I don't really know what to do. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But what what I was just thinking is uh, the prospect is, uh, is that, you know, there's a 40-day mourning period after the loss of uh, particularly important people. Right. And uh, I think that that's what we're experiencing now is the 40-day mourning period. And after that 40 days is up, you know, then we can expect a response. Now, the initial response was that Iran stated that it would forego any retaliation if the Zionist state recognized Palestine as it should, as, as it's even being you know, called upon to do by even the United States of America, you know, talking about a two-state solution, you know, well, two states, the solution is for Israel to recognize Palestine, which they haven't done, and uh, which is sort of uh, left aside, you know, like it's forgotten about, you know, anytime that they want to talk about anything else, you know, that everything else becomes more important than the recognition of Palestine. Well, nothing is more important than the recognition of Palestine at this point. So, okay, we'll see what happens in the coming <laughs> period. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad that you I'm glad you mentioned the 40 day morning period because no one in the Western press talked about Ramadan 
And during Ramadan, it wouldn't have been expected to see a retaliatory strike. It wouldn't have been expected. But yeah. the Western press never, never even talked about that, even though yeah. the politicians knew that was an issue. They knew, the Zionists knew, but no one talked about it. So we, you know, let's, uh, 40 days from whenever the date this occurred, we can put it on calendar and see what happened. Yeah. See what's happened. Something like that. And you know? probably the... Uh... On the day itself, you know, the very day, you know, the 40th day, you know, probably it'll be that. Okay. Yeah. Well, and then, and then, you know, Hania, the uh, Hamas diplomatic representative, you know, stationed in Qatar at the moment. Three sons killed, three mature sons, and four grandchildren have been killed with intention by the uh, military occupation of the Zionist state. So I, I'm so sorry for him. And he is so composed and so together. And yet he's lost his life, his life's work, his 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 heritage, his future has been erased. Except for that of Palestine. It's the only future that's left for Hania. And he's dedicated to that. You know, now Palestine will be his child. I'm so sorry for him. Well, I think we all should send, we should all should send him our our condolences in any way we can, and just just remember that the reason that his family is gone is because of U.S. and Israeli aggression. That's why they're no longer with us, and mm -hmm. that should be the ultimate, the ultimate um, response. The ultimate selling of scores has to be the ending of those systems of imperialism and brutality by Israel and the United States. Yeah, a historic judgment. Right, historical judgment. Wow. Did you hear about the, um, I'm sure you heard about this, maybe you haven't, this AI murder machine that the Israelis have, that have concocted. Uh -huh. There's it, uh, a long story about it on Pacifica News this week, uh -huh. where the Israelis have a new program, the name I can't remember, where they find out where someone's located, they're able to allow up to so many deaths per the ranking of the so-called Hamas um, operative in a house. Mm -hmm. Just just like the murder of Fred Hampton, they attack at nighttime when people are asleep, and they kill everybody in the house. Mm -hmm. So there are twenty people in the house. They kill twenty. They kill twenty. So supposedly they target one. Um, and this was shared on, on the U.S. media, pretty widespread last week. It's an AI-based program, and this is what Israel has been using. And in, in the beginning of the in the beginning of the of the um, uh, Al Oscar flood um, uh, fight back, they were uh, they never checked to make sure that the information was accurate or valid. But even then. They were allowed to kill as many non-combatants as possible. So it puts it puts to rest the lie that Hamas carried out indiscriminate shooting of civilians on October 7th. When Israel's military is now has that is their that that is their that is their tactic now. They will simply, if say they know I'm in this where I am now, and there are 10 people in the house, well, we just kill all 10 of them to get him. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's the, so what they say they condemn on October 7th, they're showing hypocrisy because they are doing even something far, far worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah. I know about this program. Mm -hmm. This program has a name. The name that they use, you know, for this program is the, uh, the gospel, <laughs> an AI called gospel. And that word doesn't come from Judaism. <laughs> That word is from the Protestant Christianity. And they refer to the gospel, you know, because, you know, that's the big difference between the uh, Protestant and the Catholic Church, you know, that the gospel was read, you know, by the uh, popular masses and was translated into the language of the national culture. The Gutenberg uh, Bible, it's called, you know, started that whole thing. And, uh, 
Yeah, you know, like, and then uh, the other sort of, you know, verbiage that Netanyahu uses, you know, talking about the Holy Land, you know, this is not, you know, part of Judaism. This is Protestant Christianity again. You know, they are, they have adopted, you know, the Western ideological framework of imperialism and colonialism. Yes. And that framework is Protestant Christianity, which considers that the, the Christian uh, churches must uh, take over the world, basically, you know, both in terms of converts and in terms of territory and influence. So, you know, like for Netanyahu, you know, to talk in that manner <laughs> is so indicative of what Zionism is. And Zionism is just a branch of, you know, Protestant Christianity. And as we know, especially in the United States of America, there are more Christian Zionists than there are Jewish Zionists. And Hagi is the uh, the leader of the of that uh, of that movement, the Christian Zionist movement, and, and of course he gets invited to speak to the APAC conference every year. I don't think APAC even has you know an uh, exclusively Jewish membership, even though it's called the Jewish Lobby. You know, I think it's an open membership organization that probably, who knows, perhaps has more you know Christian Protestant members than it has Jewish members, and yet it's called the Jewish Lobby. I don't know why. You know, it's obviously a Zionist lobby, but. You know, calling it a Jewish lobby, as some do, like uh, like even some of the Israeli oppositionists, you know, they call it a Jewish lobby. And they talk about Jewish supremacism, you know, as if, you know, it's actually Jewish, when in fact it's Zionist, you know, and it's Protestant, you know, in terms of, you know, any theological conception. You know, I object, you know, to calling it the Jewish lobby. And, and yet, you know, that's considered to be normal. And... Uh, in spite of the fact that, you know, calling it such, you know, leads to a uh, uh, degree of alienation from the Jewish people, which is unwarranted, considering that uh, the younger generations, a majority of the Jewish people are not supporting the Zionist genocide in Gaza. So this is, you know, an important point to make. And uh, journalism doesn't make that point. Journalism doesn't talk about these things, you know, because journalism, you know, like a you know, treats, you know, facts, you know, simply as facts, as if they don't mean anything other than what they are themselves, you know, as if there's no meaning, you know, to uh, to reality other than reality. Reality is reality, and that's about it, you know, for journalism. You know, I have, I have an objection, you know, to make in that respect. And I think that it requires a certain degree of analysis that we are providing that is not being provided by many other agencies. So... I, I, I agree. I, I'd like to ask you, though, just in response to what you just said, just for our viewers, um, what should we call, or what is the appropriate term to use for groups like APAC? Zionist because lobby, yeah. Zionist lobby, that's all it is, you know? Right. Okay. It's okay. just a right. Zionist or a Zionist American lobby. Okay, if we want to make it more precise, but that's about it, you know. It cannot be uh, considered to be anything else. And the leadership, okay, you know, they don't disclose, you know, what their membership is, you know, what percentage of the membership is Jewish or not. So they feed on this uh, idea that they are speaking on behalf of the uh, body of Jewish Americans uh, as an entirety, as if it's, you know, one homogeneous body, which is entirely false. And they... Uh, cannot get away with that anymore because of if not now in uh, Jewish Voice for Peace. So, uh, but you know, there's we're not close to any solution to this uh, to this uh, conundrum. You know, there are a lot of people who are saying, "Oh well, you know, like the world is opposed, you know, to uh, the Zionist state now, and so it will have to disappear." And uh, okay, so Palestine is going to be recognized as a, a voting member of the General Assembly soon. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Spain is organizing European countries to recognize, you know, the Palestine state as soon as possible. Fine. But the Zionist state is still there. And they're still claiming to speak on behalf of the Jewish people. They still claim to represent the Jewish people. They still claim to represent Jewish self-determination. They still claim to represent the Jewish right of armed self-defense. And they use that claim to carry out a, a genocide in Gaza. None of that is being discounted. <clears throat> because of the use of the term, you know, Jewish lobby. So they allow the Zionists to get away with all of those claims. And that's what I object to. So what you're so, in many respects, what you're saying is this use of the term Jewish lobby 
is not only defames the Jewish people in, in, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but it hides the political character of what APEC actually is. Yes. Okay. Yes. And gives gives uh, gives support to Zionism, in effect. Because, you know, what's wrong with uh, Jewish identity? Nothing. What's Nothing. wrong with Jewish self-determination? Nothing. Okay. What's wrong with Zionism? Everything. A whole lot. Okay. You know, totally oh. different things, you know, mm. and that's the distinction that has to be made, you know, to a more profound degree than it has been made already. It has started mm. to become differentiated, you know, but uh, it's not, you know, uh, entirely accomplished, you know, that point, just that one point in itself, you know, basic point has not been clarified yet. Well, how, how do we, I think this is something important. We, we, we've, We've talked about this a couple of times in our conversations. You've mentioned this, um, uh, mentioned this this issue of differentiating between Jewish and Zionist. So yeah. I think it's very important um, because I was listening to a program a couple of days ago, and the the commentator was talking about white supremacists and uh, anti-Jewish voices in the United States. And he was saying that one of the things that we have to watch out for is the white supremacists and the anti-Jewish, the anti-Jewish voices will come mm -hmm. out as anti-Jewish and not or they'll ex they'll exchange Jewish um Jewishness for Zionism. Mm -hmm. But when you talk to them, their mm -hmm. issue is quote the Jews. The issue is not Zionism. Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful. Because um, I know there's um, there's some analysis on the internet by some groups whose name I won't mention that I have read, and it was very quote well done, as far as the the points they were making. But they were anti-Jewish. Mm -hmm. They threw Zionism in there to throw uh, smoke up smoke in your face or mm -hmm. in your eyes, make you think that they're on the side mm -hmm. of the Palestinians, mm -hmm. which they're not. They hate the Palestinians. They hate the black people. They hate the Roma. They they hate the Chinese. They hate mm -hmm. the Russians. They hate mm -hmm. anybody who is not white nationalist. But mm -hmm. they, they throw, they they try to join the anti-Zionist a movement, and but it's actually an anti-Jewish campaign they're on. Oh and yeah, that's, and that's a difference. That's a major difference. And this guy was he was from this group called um, he he we represent this group called um, MAGA MAGA communism. Uh, you know. I don't, uh -huh. I, you know, I, I don't know nothing about this group, but he made a good point. It made me kind of think, okay, that those people who are anti-Jewish hate you. They hate the Russians. They hate anybody who's not white European, um, you know, like the white nationalist movement. But they, they try to infiltrate coming to the anti-Zionist movement, but they're really anti-Jewish. And we have to be yeah. very careful about embracing them. We have to push them out. Yeah. They, come, yeah. they, they can't be allowed even to associate yeah. with it because we're we we're we're not coming from an anti-Jewish perspective. Yeah. Uh but the Germans say we are, and now the French are saying that we are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I read some very bad things about what's happened in Germany. And France yeah. is trying to say the same thing. You can't be against 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 Zionism because you're you're you are anti-Semitic, and that's not true. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I saw a video of uh Two, uh, you know, middle-aged uh, MAGA guys, uh, gray-bearded uh, guys, you know, from MAGA, talking about Gaza, okay? And then they say, oh, you know, look at how the Zionists, you know, have been lying about Gaza, which means that the Jewish people were lying about the Holocaust, <laughs> you you know, see, see, simple, you, see, you know. Like, you, you see, know. you see, you see how he, he slid right into anti-Jewishism, right? Yeah. He slid right into it, and that's what they do. Yeah. And when you when you when you hear that, we have to be astute politicians, revolutionaries. Today, no, we we are, we are not about that, dude. We're not about yeah. the. There's no anti-Jewishness going on here. No. Yeah. And the fundamental that. flaw that they're making is, you know, just because the Zionists claim to be representing the Jewish people, they accept the, the Zionist claim. They accept Zionism in denouncing Zionism, in the name of denouncing the Jewish people. You know, because they use the Zionist, you know, paradigm, 
to claim that what they are actually sort of criticizing is Jewish people and not just Zionism. Because yes, yes. they say, well, look what the Zionists, you know, are saying. They say that they are a Jewish state that they're representing the Jewish people. So either there's anti-Zionist or they're pro-Zionist. You know, they can't be both at the same time, you know, because if right. they accept what the Zionists have to say about the Jewish people, that's pro-Zionism. <laughs> um, and this, and this is why this this is why this gentleman from this MAGA communist group was saying that APAC is not a is is not a Jewish lobby like you're saying. He said mm -hmm. APAC is not a Jewish lobby; it is a Zionist lobby. Mm -hmm. We have to take the anti we have to take the Jewish the smear against Jewish people away from APAC and, and point out what it is. It is. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he 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 spoke to it in the same in, in, in the same way you spoke to it very. Pointingly, it made it very important that people be able to make a distinction between the two parents. Yeah. 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 But presently, the um, Palestine Solidarity Movement, although it has excluded explicitly anti Semitic uh, elements and their signs, and even though uh, the Palestinians and the Palestinian supporters know the difference between Jewishness and Zionism, because of uh, Jewish Force for Peace, and if not now, basically, nonetheless, it's a populist movement. You know, it's not a, it's not a, a working class led movement. It's not a, uh, 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 a revolutionary socialist Palestinian led movement, although there are many such elements. Uh, it is still, a, you know, a populist movement because uh, those uh, elements. Not organizations, but elements and individuals, you know, who confuse and you know, make a conflation between Jewish people and uh, the Zionists uh, are accepted as such. And uh, even though it may even only be, you know, like one person, uh, as what happened in in Montreal here the other uh, month, there was a uh, a protest demonstration for real estate agents who came to sell uh, stolen land from Palestine right, you know, yeah, to, yeah, uh, to Zionists. Okay. It, yeah. So they came to the Jewish community campus where I demonstrate, you know, on Sundays, you know, with uh, the Jewish Bund vigil. Uh, and, uh, you know, this one guy, you know, gives a, a Hitler salute, you know, a Nazi oh, salute, oh, gets no. photographed. Oh. And, uh, you know, like the Palestinian uh, youth movement from which he arose had oh, nothing no. to say about this. Oh, no. You know, I asked him, you know, to to take into account, you know, what this guy had done and yeah. to uh, either make him uh, account, you know, and, and uh, regret, you know, what he had done because, of, you know, feeding into the Zionist propaganda. Right. Or expel the guy if he doesn't. Exactly. You know? exactly. One of the two. One of the two. Yeah. But neither happened. Nothing. You know, no response right. whatsoever. You know, I'm totally right. ignored, you know, by such elements. And I'm not invited to speak at Concordia University either, you know, by the Palestinian youth movement. <laughs> Even Why? though in 1994 I was arrested there for distributing, uh, handing out my book, The End of Zionism, on the Monday after the Friday in which um, Baruch Goldstein went into the Ibrahimi Mosque and killed 29 pa Palestinians, slaughtered 29 Palestinians. So I was arrested there. I was invited, you know, to come and speak at uh, at uh, Concordia University when um, Aaron Maté was the vice president there and they won the elections, you know. Oh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that was nice, you know, like we had a unified movement there of the Jewish oh, opposition boy. with Aaron Maté. And so I was telling the group, you know, at our meeting at the uh, Simon de Beauvoir Institute, uh, when uh, we had a professor, ex-CP, who uh, was sponsoring our, our, our United Front. And, you know, I, I gave the story, you know, what happened to me, you know, I was arrested, you know, mistreated and all that. And so he said, okay, well, come and speak, you know, just like that, you know, because we had the government, you know, they won the government, you know, the student government. So I did, you know, so we broke through there, you know, but now, you know, like, I don't know why they don't need me to speak to the Jewish students there because, you know, all they're doing, you know, is, is doing shouting matches, you know, in the hallways there really? with any Jewish students and the yeah, other that, Jewish that, students. That, yeah, that's, the shouting matches, the ones who win are are actually the Zionists. The Zionists win those matches. Yeah. Because their 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 intent is to not only dehumanize us, but to make us lower our level of discourse to theirs. Yeah. Now, I know there's gonna I know there's gonna be and I've been involved in these with these I mean, I've been involved with these Zionists in meetings. Yeah. They'll come and start shouting you down. 
And you have to prepare a defense before they show up. What are you going to do? Because they basically want to make sure your program doesn't even happen. And they do it by shouting. That's what they do. So anybody who's listening to this program, watch this program. You have to have a strategy before your meetings. But when the designers show up, they probably won't want to get in fisticuffs. They're just going to start shouting at you and insulting you. That's what they do. That's their tactic internationally. That's their tactic. So we have to be we have to be profound enough and and dignified enough and long thinking enough to know what's going to happen and have a strategy for when they show up because they do want us to lower ourselves to their self and we don't need to do that. Yeah, I mean it's really base, you know, like them shouting at us, you know, uh, means that they're being indignant against you know racists, anti semites. Right. Okay, uh, us shouting at them they present as being hate speech you know that right. look how hateful they are they're shouting at us you know and all this and they wouldn't let us into the building you know and all this sort of stuff right okay so right. what did they get you know from that kind of a strategy that kind of tactic they got an injunction not allowed to go back there <laughs> because they're not capable of demonstrating you know with any educational value to it so they're they're banned you know and now that injunction has been renewed again and it'll probably be where we knew it, you know, again and again until, you know, the end of this particular conflict. So, you know, they're useless, you know, except for, you know, uh, pleasing, you know, the participants, you know, for having done something when they feel so frustrated because they cannot do anything because they're not in Palestine. Well, what they have done, you know, it doesn't help Palestine all that much. So they have to rethink, you know, what they're doing. If they want to be effective, you know, they had, they should invite me to come and speak in Concordia University and invite all the Zionists to come and take me on. Okay. I'm ready to take them on. You know, like just let me, you know, give me a, a platform, give me a microphone, and I'll take apart each of their arguments. And then we'll see what's going to happen. Okay. So I don't know. I mean, what um, I'm, I'm curious though, I'm, I'm curious about one thing, and I know this is probably nothing to talk about. But I'm curious, here in the United States, in France and in uh, Germany and Britain, whoever the countries were that would not condemn the Israeli bombing of the consulate in Syria, Hmm. what does that say about the politics of those countries? Because right now the United States has sent a frigate of boats to defend Israel in case Iran attacks them. Wait a minute. Iran was attacked. Iran was attacked. Iran is not attacking. Iran was attacked. Mm -hmm. And you said it was okay to attack Iran. Mm -hmm. So it just says something about the politics of these nations and how how not only despicable they are, but Mm -hmm. how violent they are, how barbaric it is. It's becoming. Mm -hmm. When Mexico's embassy can be overrun by the police of, of Ecuador, and, and and Ecuador is not kicked out the United Nations. They should be gone. Mm-hmm. It should be. They should just be gone. It should just be banned for ninety days. Get the, you know, get the hell out of here and come back with mm-hmm. come back with some manners. I mean, even something that simple, you mm-hmm. you can't do this. But we don't see at least I don't see mass outrage among the populations of these countries. Mm-hmm. We have this eighty percent, ninety percent group of, of Israelis who support. Who, who want more violence against the Palestinians. So mm-hmm. I'm a little concerned about this resort to barbarism by the governments. And at least currently, there's not a mass upheaval against the barbarism of uh, the, the diplomatic representation of the countries. There are demonstrations, there are protests, there are people going to being put in jail, but we don't see a lot of mass yet mass revulsion against or perhaps I'm wrong of what I'm saying here, but that action of, of Ecuador and the actions of Israel in the same week, in the same week, don't say is, is a real blot on humanity right now, in my opinion. It's just it's yeah. really sad. Yeah. Not good. And Ecuador Ecuador did that, you know, because Israel got away with it for the moment. So you know they figured that they could do, you know, like <laughs> This genocide, you know, is a precedent. If they get away with this genocide in Gaza, Gaza, actually, then this, you know, sets a precedent. You know, it's going to happen, you know, elsewhere. And within, 
you know, insurgent populations of the first world as well, you know, it legitimatizes, you know, massacring, you know, any people, any group of people who revolt, revolt becomes illegal. <laughs> That's what we're starting to see. Revolt becomes illegal. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm noticing this just, again, I wasn't aware of the Germany situation until two weeks ago. I'm still profoundly shocked that an anti -pal a pro palestinian demonstration can be grouped. I heard of the, wasn't there a group, ra their office was raided in Germany, the Palestine Congress or something? Somebody's office was raided recently. Mm. But a police in Germany. Mm-hmm. They're really on a roll. They're on a roll in Germany. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're on a roll. They're mm -hmm. on a real right. They sent some troops to. They sent twenty volunteer troops to where? To where? A Lithuania, the first day some Germans since World War mm -hmm. II. I understand it. Yeah. To sit yeah. outside the country. They're on a roll. They're yeah. trying to start something. Yeah. Now I don't think we should. I think really, if we could have demonstration at the, the German consulates, opposed uh, to supporting supporting the right to demonstrate, it would be in our our interest to do that because let me tell you something i think there's one thing that me and china don't agree on i have the right to intervene in your internal affairs why because you because because the imperial said in, in, intervene in mine so i have that right china would say we can't demonstrate like that's internal affair of germany no no that's not true so what so what big deal we will we'll wash our hands when somebody get, is getting jailed i'm not saying china say that i think that's an error of their policy that the right to, that the imperialists have no problem intervening in the internal affairs of a country. Yet we sit by, oh, we can't say anything. No, fuck that. Yes. Mm -hmm. fuck that. That's nonsense. Yeah. Because that in Germany and France is wrong. And we have to support our, our sisters and brothers in Germany and France who are in the same movement. Where they're, they're in our movement to support Palestinian national liberation. So mm -hmm. when they're attacked, we have to support them. And I, I just want to make that clear, that plea to all of our listeners and viewers. Please support the brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, our comrades in France and Germany who are being attacked for being anti anti Zionist, for being pro Palestinians. We yeah. have to support them. We have to support them. We can't just let them be. Their governments have to know somebody's watching, and we will intervene in their internal affairs. We will protest them. Why? What's going on is wrong. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And the repression of the. Uh of the anti Zionists, you know, includes the yes. Jewish anti Zionists, you know, are being prosecuted by the German state. Yes. You know, they're into a genocide yes. denial. You know, the genocide, the genocide, genociders are denying genocide. <laughs> okay. Of course they do. Of course they do. Have, yeah. have you ever seen a criminal, unless one is just so brazen, admit that they're a criminal? No, I'm just doing this for this. I'm just doing this for this. I'm just doing this for this. They always, they always any kind of artist, criminal, criminal, Crooked politicians never do anything wrong. Even yeah. when they're caught, I didn't do anything, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Genocide is a denied genocide. Yep. Very yeah. good point. Yeah. Oh, my. Uh, next time, uh, next week, uh, I'd, I'd like to discuss uh, what, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the popular conceptions, you know, that are being uh, carried in the uh, Palestinian solidarity movement. One, okay. the uh, one state solution the uh, slogan uh, uh, free free palestine from from uh, the river to the sea and uh, the two state solution i want to take apart all of those things okay and see what they really mean okay okay That's good I, mean. I i think i think we could use your scholarship and uh this and um scholarship and leadership on that abraham i think so Thank yeah you. yeah i think we need to sort of you know get into that you know because it's not leading to the conclusion you know that people expect because it's not helping it's not helping because it's not, you know, the, the word solution is being used, you know, but it's not a solution, you know, and the reasons why it's not a solution, you know, is the reasons why it's not being accepted. So there has to be a um, a, pro a process instead of a solution, um, very much like, you know, Mustafa Barghouti, you know, of the Palestinian National Initiative, you know, talks about a two-state process which we begin with the recognition of a Palestine state you know, in, in, in the United Nations General Assembly, and then we proceed from there, you know, because then the Palestine state can present various motions. And then we start to get into the nitty gritty. So, you know, to talk about a solution, you know, as either two state or one state, you know, like, 
is so short-sighted, you know, and doesn't achieve anything and indicates, you know, the the uh, immaturity of the Palestinian solidarity movement, even though it is massive, you know, but mass yeah. is not yeah. enough. You know, it has to have a clear program that is understood and is inevitable. And that's what we have to get into. Yeah. Abraham, you, 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 you've shown some scholarship and, and wisdom here. Uh, the black movement had the same problem that we I've seen so few people talk about this. Hmm. Uh, in the sixties and seventies, and around uh, um, and around uh, George Floyd, what is yeah? Where where are we? What is the what is our goal? What's our solution? And do our strategies serve our goal? I think that's something that you mentioned that the Palestinian movement now is a broad movement, but it's a young movement. And young movements, we have to realize. There is a history we must draw from of what happened before us and those who have an analysis that may differ from us, mm. but might serve us. Because yeah. if, if the goal is national liberation, then we have to accept that we're young and don't know it all. Mm. And it's hard for movements to do. Yeah. yeah. It's hard, it's, but it's, still... it's necessary. It's necessary. Mm. Yeah, it's still a young movement. These are all still young movements. Uh, and uh, what used to be called in the 60s, you know, I remember what used to be called the civil rights movement. Right. Okay, civil rights, huh? Okay, so civil rights have been formally accepted, you know, and implemented. Has it provided solution? No. No, no it has not. No. Yeah. Solution means solve the problem. Yeah. Solution is a solution based on the word solve, S-O-L, solve, S -O -L, solve mm -hmm. the problem. The problem mm -hmm. has not been solved. So yeah. the solution has not been has not been achieved. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very to begin good. with, you know, civil rights, you know, refer to individual liberal rights, and <laughs> it's insufficient, you know, because George Floyd, you know, he he didn't submit to the cops, and so he was killed, you know, because he moved, so he was killed. You know, you're not allowed to move. You're not allowed to indicate. You're not allowed to say anything. You know, because you're resisting. And then he said, well, we respected his civil rights, you know, like we told him his, you know, uh, his rights, you know, to, uh, to, to, to obtain a lawyer, you know, and all that sort of shit. So, you know, like uh, he, his civil rights were respected, you know, even though he was killed. Right. <laughs> so the question is national liberation. That's the question. That's How the to question. solve national liberation. That's yeah. the question. That's the question. And I do think... I, I just want to say one thing about that. I go back to the black movement. I would have hoped if King wouldn't have been murdered, that he he was beginning to work in the interest of the garbage workers. That's why it was murdered. He was mm -hmm. murdered in, in Memphis, organizing mm -hmm. a supporting the strike of garbage workers, most of whom were black, all who were working class, all who were poor. Mm -hmm. And it would have been hopeful if that, if his experience and wisdom on the civil rights movement could have merged or been influenced by the more militant worker struggle. That's what we did. Once he got there, he was assassinated. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, I mean, so that's what we, um, I, we have to look back at that because after he was assassinated, essentially the Black Power Movement was destroyed and the civil rights movement became, became, became more, um, uh, I, I want to say bankrupt, but became more um, bought off. It became mm -hmm. black people, in black faces, black faces in high places became the civil rights movement. That's mm -hmm. what it became. Yeah. So 